So this is problem 13 from the 2012 AP Calculus exam. Non-calculator multiple choice question here. They present us with this piecewise function. Uh, so the split in the piecewise function happens at 3. So we've got a function value of 2 for values that are smaller than 3. And then we've got a function value of x minus 1 for any value of x 3 or above. We're asked for the value of this definite integral. So what you would have to realize within this situation is that the limits of integration include the value where this function changes from being defined one way to being defined a new way. So it's helpful to have the graph of this function in front of you in order to come to understand how to answer the question. So what I did is I took a minute to graph y equals 2 or f of x equals 2. That was my graph for values of x less than 3. So I technically had an open circle here. You can't really see that open circle because then I had to graph this function for values of x greater than or equal to 3. So I was trying to figure out where this graph picked up, 3 comma what value. Well, when I put 3 in place of this x, 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So this graph picks up at 3 minus 2. So what's kind of nice about this situation is that the closed circle where the second piece of the function picks up fills in the open circle where the first piece of the function leaves off. Even if we didn't have this nice situation here, uh, if you were in a situation where you were doing a problem like this and you had a hole in the graph somewhere or a jump in the graph, a place where the limit didn't exist, a place where the graph was discontinuous, you can still find the integral by, by adding up the appropriate area components uh, as long as you're not trending toward infinity with the area. And that would be what we call an improper integral, which is something you talk about in, in Calc BC or in Calculus 2. Uh, you can still go ahead and, and approach that situation the same way we're about to do this one here. So what I realized is the integral from 1 to 5 is going to be done one way from 1 to 3, and then a separate way from 3 to 5. And I just need to add up those two calculations in order to get the total signed area between f of x and the x-axis from 1 clear to 5. So you, you can do this several different ways. I have steps written out down here uh, where I did the antiderivative of 2, tossed in the limits, took a difference. I did the antiderivative of x minus 1, tossed in the limits, took a difference. I got this answer of 10 through those steps. You can do this a little bit differently. So I'm trying to draw vertical lines there, which didn't go so well. Uh, but if you realize that from 1 to 3, the value of this integral is just going to be the same as the area of this square, I guess that is, because it goes from 1 to 3 on the x-axis, and it goes from 0 to 2 with its y values. So this would have an area of 4 square units. And then you can go ahead and you can place a trapezoid here. right? So the parallel sides would measure 2 units. And then whatever the y value is up here at 5, so the y value there at 5 is going to be 5 minus 1, 4. So I can do 2 plus 4 divided by 2. That would be the average length of the parallel sides times the distance between the parallel sides. So 2 plus 4 over 2 is 3. 3 times 2. The distance between the parallel sides is 6. If I take the area of that square, which is 4, and I add on the area of this trapezoid, which is 6, I get the same answer a little bit different way, but still obviously a valid way to produce the proper answer for that question.